welcome everybody. Thank you um, for everybody at home that's joining us. Uh, I'm so excited to introduce a couple of people that have been part of our community and who have just beautiful stories and experiences to share with us. So, hey, Noah and Rachel. Hi, guys. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Um, so, I'm just going to start with the really simple, you know, question off the bat, which is how did you guys get connected with our Canadian Murders uh, community with our church and chaplaincy and maybe we'll start with Noah and then Rachel. Sure yeah so it's actually kind of interesting so um, I went to school up in Peterborough um, to a school called Master's College and Seminary and I was attending um, St. Peter and Chains while I was there and that's kind of where I started um, doing RCIA and stuff like that and um, then for my last semester though I had an internship which I'm from you know the Grimsby area so my internship sent me back here, so I kind of need to pick up RCA at a at a different parish, obviously, and um, so yeah, um, my friend Lucas, he's a CCO missionary over at uh, Trent University, and um, he basically just put me in contact with Rachel, who got me into the RCIA class when they started back. I think it was in January, maybe early February, something like that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I did my first half of the journey, I guess, in Peterborough, then finished up here. That's so awesome. It, it's amazing how like. God kind of makes those connections kind of mm -hmm, all, sure. all over the place. Yeah. Um, cool. And what about you, Rachel? How did you get connected with this? Uh, so when I moved to Hamilton to start doing um, my master's at Mac, um, I just Googled Catholic churches nearby. And since I live right near Mac, I mean, the parish is right there. So I've been going to church at Canadian Martyrs since September of 2017. Mm -hmm. And Emily just said, okay, let's, uh, let's make this official. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So, um, I don't know, we, we have included kind of your stories in our weekly updates in the past. So some people may be a little bit familiar, but in case someone's brand new to this, um, both Noah and Rachel have been journeying into the church and it's been a, a real privilege for us as a community to be kind of walking alongside them um, in different capacities and at different stages. Um, so I just wanted to ask you guys, what has stood out to you? Um, you were just confirmed less than a month ago and what kind of stands out to you from that whole process and that whole journey? If you had to pick like maybe one or two things. Um, I mean, probably just one of the biggest things was how adaptable everybody was to just everything that was going on. And I, when I went into this whole thing, I sort of went into it thinking this is going to be such a weird situation for everyone where I've been going to mass, but I wasn't confirmed. And, you know, are people going to think this is weird? And that's part of why I held off on talking to anyone about it for, you know, almost three years I've lived here before I mentioned it to anyone. Um, uh, but just everybody was just said, oh yeah, no big deal. I mean, even Father Marcus, he said, don't worry, we're not going to put you in a room full of eight-year-olds. Like, we're, we're going to, you know, this is going to be fine. Um, and then when we did get into the midst of it, and you guys had already shortened down the RCIA program into sort of like a, a was it a 10-week thing you were going to do with us? Mm -hmm. When it was literally, you know, several months. Um, so on top of already shortening it, shortening it down, and then all of a sudden we're in quarantine, and you know, at the drop of a hat, Sister Mary emails me and she goes, yeah, okay, you know, everyone's ready, Let, you know, and then Father emails me two days later and he's like, how was this weekend? And, uh, it, but everybody was just so very present and helpful and, you know, it was just, it was lovely. Yeah, I mean, it, I think one of the things that helped was for, we had this very special group, I think, of um, people that we we've been journeying with it, that you guys have been part of that that group and everybody had come from a different place you know and and um and it it allowed us to have this unique experience of preparation for the sacraments because each of you had already uh, knowledge and 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 a familiarity with the church so it wasn't like total totally something that was foreign to you guys and it made it such a kind of a beautiful space for conversation and things like that and just for us to um to experience your faith from when you came when we when we first got to know you to you know where you are now and then continuing on on that journey so that's been really cool and there has been like you said every kind of thing in the book that's <laughs> gone wrong yeah pretty much yeah in the last uh, since january for sure what about you know what stood out to you um mm. on the journey yeah, well, my answer might be a little similar to Rachel's, just in the sense that, um, 
you know, kind of getting to, you know, do that journey together with um, other people who, even though we did come from, you know, sort of different angles that led us to that point of beginning the RCA process and all of that, um, just kind of the understanding amongst everybody of like, you know, the questions, the hesitations that come along with being a convert, right? So that was kind of cool to, you know, journey along some um, other people on a similar walk that I was. And I felt like super welcome, you know, right off the bat, even though I was kind of a stranger to this, you know, parish and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's, it's home now, right? So it's just, it was really cool to kind of, you know, go on that journey and like really get, you know, integrated here along the way and stuff like that. And um, I guess another thing that stands out obviously is like um, just the weirdness that came along with going through this process during quarantine, right? Like yeah. it was supposed to be obviously on the Easter vigil, but then, you know, masses across the board were just like, you, we weren't doing them, you know, publicly anymore. And then, yeah, like Rachel said, it was kind of a, a whirlwind where it was like, you know, Father Marcus just said, oh yeah, we can do it this time. Are you ready for it? And it's like, sure. And then, you know, within a couple of weeks from that email, you know, and even the, the morning itself, it just went by like so fast. And it was like a couple of times I just kind of had to like tell myself, whoa, this is like real. This is happening right now. Right. So right. it was just, it was just like such a, it was weird. The contrast of like kind of being disappointed that I was pushed back and having to wait. But then like when it happened, it just happened so quickly. So. It was a weird contrast. It was kind of funny too, though, because that was one of the things that I had expressed to Father Marcus right from the start was that I didn't want to make a big deal out of this. I wanted to just sort of, you know, figure this all out and, you know, not have it be a big thing. And <laughs> he calls me. <laughs> so the opportunity to have it not be a big thing just came available. Yeah. <laughs> and so off we went. And, yeah, that's right. You know, there, were, there were three of us there that day. It was... <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean so 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 unique um but it also made me think like god just you know like that grace acting in your lives and your mm -hmm. response to it it's just there you know in a way it couldn't be stopped you know like that process um continued and and i remember seeing like noah actually got to be um at your confirmation that was so powerful for me mm -hmm. um and and rachel i wasn't able i really wanted to be and i wasn't able to be there that day but i remember seeing the picture of rachel's confirmation with karen your sponsor behind you and it was it just really moved me when i saw that picture because um yeah it just was like it just said the sense that god is so much bigger than than even the biggest trials that we're facing and it was just very beautiful and um yeah hopeful both of those moments were such hope-filled moments i think for those of us present and hopefully um for people who got the email and saw the pictures and now are hearing your stories um in a little bit more detail mm -hmm. which is so cool i was glad though that father marcus did mention how very brief confirmation would be he did prep me for that because mm -hmm. it you, you blink and it's done. I mean, that yeah, was, for sure. <laughs> was, was kind of crazy. So, oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're confirmed. Yeah, I know. And so, yeah. yeah I wasn't man. expecting that, <laughs> but yeah, for sure. And so it's, yeah. And I think it probably more so even because of everything being so, somewhat pared down and, mm -hmm. and that yeah. kind of sense of it. That's something. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to ask you then, I mean, we've already talked about it a little bit. In that moment, you, you mentioned how brief it was and like how that kind of, uh, you know, throws you off a little bit maybe, but what kind of impacted you that day, that moment? Um, what, are, what are some of the things that have come to your heart since then or in that, in that experience? Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, just like what as or during that day, what like really kind of stood out to me was, you know, it wasn't just, you know, changing a title. It was like actually getting, you know, graces from God, right? Like I wasn't just going from being a Protestant to being a Catholic, but it was like, there was actually, you know, grace that I was given that day and like a change that, you know, I went through in my, you know, in my soul that day, you know, from like the gifts that God gives us in the sacraments. Right. And I just remember thinking that a couple of times throughout the day that it's like, this is like a change that's like eternal. It's not just, you know, going from, one camp to them to another it's like something a lot more permanent than that it's something you know supernatural right and uh yeah so that's what was kind of on my mind that day I guess because it was also sudden with you know like I, I literally I think I talked to Father Marcus on a Wednesday I went in for confession the Saturday and then confirmation and communion was the Sunday I mean it was all so quick and so mm. whole day Friday I was kind of sitting at home going this is Am I actually ready for this? Have we had enough classes? Is that, is that all this, you know, is, is that all right, there yeah. ready? And um, 
I mean, just something about actually physically being there on the day, all of a sudden, all that worry just went away. Mm. It was really nice. Um, so. I remember coming out of my first confession, just feeling like I, I, like I felt different, right? You know, it's not all about how you feel, like, you know, the grace is applied to you, whether you feel it or not, but just walking away from the parish that day, having my, you know, first confession and confirmation, all that stuff, it was just like, you know, you could just feel the grace walking out of something like that, right? Yeah. And I said this to you know before, but it's a gift to the church. I mean, every time someone someone right. um, comes into the body of Christ, like you bring um, the beauty of the gift of you to mm. to that community and to the whole church. And that's such a an occasion for joy for all of us. So it's um, it's really awesome. For sure, yeah. Um, all right. So my last question for you guys is you are kind of you know, you know, newbie Catholics, you know, a month, <laughs> less than a month old. Yeah. Um, and now, and we've been in COVID and quarantine all this time. So you haven't had a chance to go to mass every Sunday, like we normally would, but now things are opening up and we are able to go to mass to access the sacrament. So what does that mean for you guys? Um, what's on your mind when you sort of, when you're contemplating that reality, and that change? Um, for me, one of the, I mean, I have been going to mass you know, for, for years now. And I think sort of a lot of the time sitting there, and I know this is a silly thing to think, but I'd be sitting there and I'd sort of be thinking, wow, you know, like everybody else has done all these things that I haven't done or they, you know, they've received, that I haven't received. And, you know, it's, it's, you sort of feel like an outsider. And um, I know that that's a silly thing to think and that, you know, there's, you know, it is what it is. And, um, but you know, I, th I think that'll be a kind of a different feeling now going is sort of that feeling of belonging that that wasn't there before, not because I wasn't accepted, because everybody welcomed me with, you know, the most open of arms. But um, just something inside of me felt like I was an outsider. And so now I think there will be much more of a feeling of belonging being back. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, I, I imagine maybe I would feel similar. Just maybe experiences or whatever you can just, and you know, um, now being able to have the full experience of the mass in a way that you've never had before is so special. And, um, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm sad that you didn't feel like you belonged in some ways, but I'm excited that that's something you're looking forward to experiencing, you know, um, in the coming weeks and then months and then, Always, <laughs> and hopefully, never again will we be in this situation. <laughs> hopefully, <So>. yeah. hopefully. <laughs> um, what about you, Noah? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, kind of a similar answer, but um, I remember you know coming to mass before being confirmed, and um, you know when people went up for communion, I would either stay in my pew or you know go up for spiritual communion, one of the two. And I just remember like thinking to myself how much I couldn't wait to actually be able to receive Jesus with everybody else, and. Um, yeah, so at my confirmation, obviously, it was a hugely just special moment to do that for the first time. But um, I'm still looking forward to that first time, you know, with all my, you know, brothers and sisters, right? Just being part of like that kind of communal coming to the Lord's table and just receiving Jesus together. So I'm just really excited for, you know, the more community aspect of things um, as things start to open up again. And uh, yeah, so I guess that's where my mind's at with it all. It's kind of funny, too, because I mean, I've been um, helping out with the collection for you know, practically since I've, I've been here. Um, and, but the last few times we had mass before, um, everything got shut down, I did go up for spiritual communion and just something, I mean, I'm up at the front all the time with, you know, the collection basket and, but something about going up for communion was completely different. And I, I don't know, I didn't expect it to be. So all of a sudden I'm up there and I'm thinking, why does everything look different? I'm up here all the time, you know, but it, something about being up there in that context was completely different. So, mm -hmm. It'd be nice to be able to, you know, do it, do it for real. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm soon. laughs> oh man. And I, yeah, it's just so exciting. It's an exciting time. And in some ways, I guess, um, your confirmations being so recent, it's like a new beginning for you guys, but then it's also a new beginning for the whole church in a way, you know, because we've never had this experience of being on lockdown and missing mass. And I think in some ways the whole, Catholic community is is united in this experience of longing for the Eucharist, right? Like that we mm, haven't had a chance true. to be, like you were saying, no, at the table together, um, uh, at the Lord's Supper together. And um, so in some ways, it's kind of cool because it's 
a bit of a new experience for you guys in this context and with this capacity of being fully, you know, with the family of God, receiving communion, all that kind of stuff. But it's also new for everybody in a way because um, we're, we've all been away from from that place for a long time. So yeah, so I, I haven't, I never really thought of it till you guys mentioned that. It's like, wow, we really are going to have this similar experience i think of that in some ways it's kind of funny too because um my my sponsor karen uh said to me sort of on the day she goes you're going to show these photos to your grandkids and they're going to say why did you used to have to wear masks to be confirmed that's so great oh my gosh um so yeah you guys Thank you so much for sharing, you know, your journey with us. Thank you for your openness to the, the work of the spirit in your lives. Um, I really, I mean, I know it's been a joy for father, for sister, for me, um, just to get to know you both um, and to be a part of this, this very, very special time in your lives and hopefully, you know, continue to be family and community as we go forward um, and navigate kind of re-entry together. And I'm really looking forward to being at Mass with, hopefully with, I mean, we, you know, there's there will be a couple of options for Mass on Sunday, so we may not be at the same one, but we will be together in the Mass whether we're together at the same time or not. So that's right. Fine. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you. Thanks.